Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I was lucky enough to sit down and chat with Sherry Cola. If you're from California, you may know her from the radio, or maybe you caught her on her web series, Luber, where she debuted her character, Lil Tasty. Or if you're like me, you've seen her on I Love Dick, Claws, or Good Trouble. Whatever you've seen, she's always funny, and we had a great chat. Hope you enjoy. Hey, what's up, Sherry? Less in the flesh. What's up, dude? <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, for taking the time out to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Of uh, course. Thanks for having me. So you are currently playing Alice, who uh, I guess I could loosely define as the landlady of the Coterie on Good Trouble, but I would think Alice defines that far beyond I've ever had. A, I've never had a landlady do anything close to uh, supply me toilet paper, I don't think. Right. Um, it's interesting because, you know, it honestly was such a shock already that I saw that someone wanted to see this character. This character was specifically written as a first generation Asian American um, who's not out to her parents. You know what I mean? It was such a beautiful POV that I feel like is overdue when it comes to being on the TV screen, you know? So already I was just so like happy to see that, you know, this character was created, Alice, you know? So I went in for it, fell in love with the character, you know, saw a lot of myself in Alice, and then, you know, it came to the next audition. They wanted me to see see me again. I was like, oh, and then the third audition, then the final audition, and suddenly, you know, it's like you can't not have it. Like, you want it so badly, you know? Um, And, I mean, blessings on blessings, I did book it, and it was just such an incredible moment you know i genuinely was i was in tears because i mean this is probably the biggest role i've ever booked uh thus far you know um so it's just really important for me to portray this character because of the story the the experience that we're telling you know and um yeah i feel like this character of alice can really relate to everyone whether you are female or lesbian or you know just uh, you have traditional parents or you feel the weight of responsibility on your shoulders. You know, Alice manages the coterie, but it really isn't her job to provide free toilet paper. For some reason, she feels the need to just be the one people depend on, you know, and be the mom kind of of the building. You know, of course, it's a communal li- living situation, which not all of us have experienced Um in terms of, you know, landladies being amazing. But, like, yeah, I mean, it's a very it's a very fun character. You know, as much as she has these comedic moments um, and she's really awkward and, you know, you see her kind of struggling with confidence, she also has these, excuse me, very heart-wrenching, you know, scenes where, you know, I don't know how much you've seen, but she's, like, eating the cake with her bare hands. She's going through heartbreak, you know. So the evolution of Alice, is definitely something to look forward to. You, you'll be surprised. Well, and that was something that I had wondered. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say how much of the character was was on the page when you you know when you got the audition in the first place. Because I was kind of wondering, did you just wonder if you were walking into a generic sidelined Asian character, or did you know you were walking into something special? Yeah. Uh, and and also, I, I for me, I really like the the counterbalance of watching someone who is trying so much to not disappoint this whole group of people because of this feeling of constantly disappointing another group of people. Right. But I, I feel like Alice has this, this sense that she's disappointing her parents and that she will further disappoint them if she came out. And, and so I, I liked kind of seeing that explanation of why somebody would go a little harder at friendship or at, at, at this than maybe they ought to. Totally. Totally. I mean, yeah, because she is, you know, and it'll go deep. It'll definitely go deeper um, in a few episodes with her parents and stuff. Uh, But it's because, yeah, she feels like she's this big disappointment to her parents. So it's like, oh, she doesn't want to disappoint anyone else. You know what I mean? Like, let me just overdo everything else. You know, let me still plan my ex's wedding because, God forbid, I disappoint her, even though she's disappointed me so much. 
you know, and like the same with, you know, everyone in the coterie. She just wants to be the one that people count on. She doesn't want anyone to have negative feelings about her. You know, it is very interesting. That frustration definitely comes with, uh, from deep within, you know, so uh, it's a journey that she's going on. You know, I'm, I'm super excited. And, and yeah, in terms of um, the character written specifically, uh, yeah, it was definitely first generation Asian American and it's such a beautiful thing, you know, and there's actually another part um, it, that, that's a secret <laughs> that I really related to in the thing that you'll see later on. <laughs> No, no, I don't, don't, don't spoil it. I, I can't wait. It's going to be great. So I, I know you got your start initially in, in college radio uh, and then doing the, the Amp Street team uh, and then getting a, eventually a, a show on, on the radio. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about um, those transition steps between finding that you enjoyed radio and then getting offered a, a stand-up set or, or, or getting into stand-up or uh, – or, or getting a radio show and, and moving into that next step. I always find that it's interesting kind of what makes that final scary push that, that pops that bubble or that moves you to that next step of like, I, I really like this, but can I admit to everyone that I love this and have to do it? Right. I mean, I've always been, you know, heavy on the fact that life is too short for just one dream, you know? And like radio was something I kind of just uh, stepped into and was always interested in, you know, of course, when you grow up, like you listen to the power 106, you listen to people, you know, on the way to school. And it's really a big deal. Like everyone is tuning in to listen to one person in the morning. Like it's kind of cool, you know? So it's always had an appeal to me. And when I got to college, uh, I ended up doing that for like three and a half years. And it was just, you know, some music, some, new stuff and I did find myself poking fun at celebrity pop culture things you know there was a comedic aspect to it um and I was just doing my thing I mean you know it was only like 30 listeners it wasn't anything crazy but I felt like okay maybe this is the way I'll broadcast my personality because at, at the same time there was also this weird dilemma of like well what am I doing you know like I'm in college for communications entertainment studies um just because I chose something broad because you know I didn't know what my identity was and like um i i also wanted to be a comedian at, like while this was all happening you know i went to the open mics uh at the hollywood improv i remember putting my name in the pot but i just never got picked and it was one of those things where like i just went a couple times i never got picked so then i ended up just like never going back but always had it in the back of my head you know i was always still like writing jokes you know and then simultaneously i also kind of wanted to be a rapper you know like that's kind of where Lil Tasty eventually comes in and I live vicariously through her. You know, I remember thinking, and it's a really messed up thought, but I thought, Oh, there's no way the world would take a female rapper seriously. Like they'll just think like, I, I don't know. It was just, it felt too hard. You know, if I were to ever do that, and which sucks, you know, of course today I do have a different mindset. This was like in 2012. <laughs> I probably had this thought. I don't know. I don't know to be honest, but I was like, you know, with my laptop, just posting random raps over like Drake instrumentals. You know what I mean? Like I was really into it, and, like, um, but never really any more than that. You know, um, but yeah, like it, I mean, it's not that it's impossible. It's not that the world won't take a female rapper seriously. But I looked at the facts. You know, like there weren't any, there weren't that many female rappers already but let alone, you know, Asian female rappers, you know, that people won't just see as like a gimmick or a trend, you know? So it was just, anyway, it wasn't that serious, but hip hop is something I enjoy my whole life. Anyway, so it was like this whole thing. I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? So I'm like, you know what? Forget it. Let me just focus on radio, you know? Cause looking back, um, and I've talked about this a couple of times where like in high school, I was doing things like hosting talent shows and like making funny videos and stuff like that. But for some reason, it never even clicked that this could be end game, you know, like, I don't know what it was that was stopping me from going full throttle on that. Like, because, you know, I don't know, you, you it was it the lack of representation that made me think, oh, that's for Americans, <laughs> you know, acting is for Americans. I don't know, because. You know, I, I'm also an immigrant, you know. I came when I was um, four to this country, and, like, of course, there were a lot of things I didn't even know or movies I didn't see until I was older, you know, because I had to just watch it for myself. 
anyway, um, I'm kind of rambling now, but the point is, so I, I did college radio and then after, uh, college, I just immediately got a job on the street team of amp radio. And that was just like what you knew to get your foot in the door for radio. You know, I knew people who you have to start on the street team. You slowly work your way up to being, being on air. Like that's just the story, you know? So that's what I like, like the mail room of radio. Right. Was there one percent of me that thought, "Oh, I'm in the building of a radio station. Maybe I'll get discovered as a rapper." One percent, okay, one percent. <laughs> I was thinking that, but either way, so I'm in there and I'm like doing street team and like honestly giving a hundred and ten percent to the point where people are like, "Why does Sherry care so much?" You know about like passing out stickers, you know. Um, but I had a, an ultimate goal, you know. So. Uh, here I am, street team. Then I ended up doing some social media stuff. I ended up doing, like, um, like we would go on these trips to Palm Springs, like, uh, to Vegas, all these, like, almost like, I, I was just very involved, you know? I was a board op on the weekends. I was uh, on the street with a microphone getting, like, you know, listener, like, feedback uh, for on air. Like, little things. I was just doing as much as possible for that end goal, you know? So then eventually... So this was probably two years in. I was there for like maybe three and a half years. Like I started doing stand up because K Rock, the sister station, you probably know, world famous K Rock, um, they had this guy named Super Steve who was just like putting together a comedy show. And he was it was just like a casual comedy show in a bar in downtown Fullerton, uh, which is where I went to college. So full circle. Anyway. And he was like, uh, I guess my boss kind of just convinced me to do it. Because I always talked about it, you know. It's always something I wanted to do. So I was like, oh, why not? Put me on the lineup. So this was March 2016. And then so I ended up doing it, loved it. And simultaneously, that same week, uh, Lil Tasty, like, blew up. It went viral. This character that I was doing, she's a Kobe-obsessed rapper, you know, adorable, you know, just rapping the most obnoxious things and her video of her going to Seven Eleven just like swept the nation <laughs> not really but you know what i mean <laughs> so it was kind of crazy i was like well that whole character was just improv you know like i was just going into the world and just saying what came out of my mouth in this character you know so it was this weird moment of like well i just did stand up loved it like in love with it really and then like the high of people laughing at your jokes and you coming off the stage just on cloud nine, like it's irreplaceable, you know? Um, and then this little tasty thing. Well, am I acting? I don't know. It's just off the top of my head. Am I acting? What's happening? You know? So that was happening. So then my really good friend from college, Colin, he was actually like, as you know, a, a just a random college job. He was the general manager of the college radio station. So he hit me up and then we kept in touch throughout the years and just was like, yo, like, love what you're doing. Like, cause he's been wanting me to do stand up forever. He always was like this dude that thought I was funny, believed in me, like wanted me to join his friends in doing this, like, you know, funny sketch thing, whatever. So the point is, he was like, I want to come see you do stand up. And I was like, yeah, I do whatever. whatever. Like, um, and the next day he's like, dude. I love what you're doing. Everything, like everything that you're doing, little tasty stand up. And I was like, Oh cool. Like, wait, what do you do again? What's up? What's up with you? And he was like, Oh, I'm a manager. And I literally thought he meant like of the cheesecake factory. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> right. Like, you know, I was just like, Oh, my old friend. But he was like, no, like, and then we got into talking and basically the rest was history. Like he was like, let's make, I'm sorry. Am I allowed to say bad words on this? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've been really holding back. I don't know if you can tell, but, um, <laughs> But he was, I mean, basically he was like, let's make shit happen. I was like, I'm down. So, I mean, from then, you know, like, um, it was interesting because maybe a couple months after that, I was still at the radio station, you know, like, not, it's not like I was successful overnight. Not at all. You know, it was just like things that I realized, oh, okay, let's go, let's go hundred percent. Let's really dive into comedy and just let's try acting for real. You know what I mean? And like, um, but yeah, a couple months later, that's when Carson Daly the morning show of Amp Radio, uh, the host, Old Faithful, we love him. He, like, stumbled upon my low tasty stuff and, like, knew that I do stand-up, like, found out, you know, and he was like, oh, this chick is in the building? Like, why aren't we u utilizing her, you know? Like, we need, like, a funny segment or something. So then that's eventually how I got my first start officially 
on air was I did some like weekly, you know, it was sporadic, you know, this comedic segment um, with Carson Daly in the morning, which was a freaking dream. Like we all grew up watching TRL, you know, this was nuts. Um, yeah. So yeah, you, that was, you really know, you're cool. stepping into a huge audience. Yeah. There. It was amazing. So I just did my thing for a little bit there. And like, eventually, because now I had the experience, like, um, a group of us, like, kind of pitched a show, I guess, packaged and put together uh, this Sunday night new music show, you know, and that was cool. I was the host of that with my co-host, uh, Vanessa Michaels, who's uh, a producer and um, producer in the music sense, DJ, and uh, also my real life roommate and very good friend. Anyway, uh, shout out to Vanessa. <laughs> but yeah, that was really fun. We had that for like almost a year. And then, um, yeah, so that lasted for 10 months or something like that. And then, because uh, radio is its own beast. You know, the company ended up getting bought out by another company and they basically trimmed a few things and it's fine. You know, but the point is, radio will always be a big passion of mine. But already at that point, I'd been doing I Love Dick and like MTV Safe Word. So I'd already been doing some TV, you know, and like really like this is, this is happening. Let's, let's, you know, keep doing this, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I Love Dick was my first show that I was ever on. And that was at the same time that we got like our radio show also, the Sunday night show. So that was really cool. Just a lot of things that were happening that made me realize, oh, why wasn't I doing this? Like at the age of 18, you know, <laughs> like why did it take me this long to like really realize what I wanted in life, you know what I mean? Because I spent like seven years in college just kind of like literally lollygagging, you know? Yeah, just kind of standing in the room wondering what you came there to find. Exactly. There's something, whenever I talk to people who, you know, come from a stage theater background and end up on TV, uh, I, I always want to wonder if if it's weird to adjust to that loss of immediacy and that, that not having an audience there and, and you know, doing things out of chronological order, uh, but coming from radio, was it was it the opposite? Was it kind of odd suddenly having other people and not being alone in a booth with just, you know, one engineer or something? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about, like, uh, radio and, like, even stand-up. Like, going, acting. yeah, going from radio, yeah, to, to stand-up and then, or even on set with, uh, you know, when you've got crew and grip and all these folks you got to ignore and, you know, you just stare at this person and pretend like it's all real. Uh, right. Was it... Was it weird adjusting to that coming from from radio, where you, you know, you kind of shout out into the world and just assume people heard you? If anything, it's interesting because radio and stand up, it's a a direct, if you will. Like I'm talking to mm -hmm. you, the audience. There's no uh, fourth. There's no fourth wall. wall to break. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, it, it is very interesting, and it is a very you know, um, uh, solo sport you know what i mean uh as opposed to acting yeah you have a partner that you're working off of even more than one partner sometimes and you have to like uh, the camera isn't there you know um it is it is very interesting i mean it was even a, a different experience i remember taking like improv classes you know and that's a group effort like fresh out of like just starting to do stand-up that's already different you know like it is cool to just have that balance because you remember like oh it's not just about you there's other people in the picture right now you know what i mean which is very dope um to be able to work with others and like have that energy bounce back and forth and then also have my my stand-up stuff you know and like it, it's nice that i get to do both you know um but yeah something about being on set is such a beautiful thing i remember like you mentioning all the grits and like the camera people i remember my mom um, coming to visit at one time and we were doing this, uh, like we moved from one location to another and the second location was just on the street in downtown LA. And I mean, it was like a big move, you know, and it was all this equipment, all these people. And it, the phone, the scene was just me like on the phone. And my mom was like, you know, I mean, we like came to America in 1994 and like, she's still taking it all in and she's so proud, you know? And she was like, wow, like, all these people, like, just for my daughter, like, talking on the phone, you know, like, she was so taken aback, like, and it is cool, you know, I mean, it's such a blessing, the people on set are, I mean, the crew, our crew is so good, and, like, they're so, you know, they're the real MVPs, you know what I mean, and, like, it's just, it, it's so interesting, I mean, I, hey, I'm even still taking it in, you know, I'm still kind of, like, pinch me every five minutes, um, but, yeah, there is a different dynamic, for sure, like, doing uh, a solo performance with a microphone 
uh, versus, you know, being on set and just doing a scene, both of which are just things that I, I definitely adore. And, you know, I do love working with others. You know, acting is something that is, you know, it's, it's neck and neck with stand up right now. You know, it's like it, it's it's so oh, there's something about it. And it's just like liberating. It's you know, you're really telling a story, but it's kind of still a, a piece of you that's getting revealed, you know, and um, mm -hmm. you know, all your experiences, all the emotions you've ever felt in your years, like same with the other person across from you, we're just bouncing that back and creating the scene. And it's really just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, yeah, you know, you get it. <laughs> has there been any, out of all of these, you know, transitions and different gigs, has there been one that, that you remember is kind of being the scariest, the, the most butterflies in your stomach? Um, and, wait, uh, what was the word they said? The most what? Butterflies in your stomach. Oh, um, I mean, it's so interesting because every single thing I do, I'm just naturally always nervous and always so happy to be here and always scared it'll get taken away from me. You know, <laughs> like, I feel like yeah. that's just like my constant state of mood. No, like even, I mean, of course, the first day, the big you know, butterfly moment of good trouble was like John M. Chu directed the pilot. You know, he was fresh off of crazy rich Asians. That's a huge deal, especially for me and Asian American actors, you know? So the first day of shooting at all, good trouble was me, Maya and Sierra. And it was John M. Chu. And, you know, I remember that day already. It was like the middle of June. I was wearing a hoodie and I was just drenched. And it was that toilet paper scene. I don't know if you saw it, but like me holding those two packs of toilet paper. So I was like, I probably lost like five pounds on set that day. <laughs> I was like sweating, trying to do my best, you know what I mean? And just kind of impressed, really. Um, and also not uh, faint from, you know, hyperventilating under this hoodie. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was a day of butterflies for sure, you know. Um I remember, uh, I mean, stand-up, I feel like, is always an adrenaline rush. You know, every single time, like, I get up on that stage, I feel like, you know, I'm going to throw up. But once I'm up there, this is home, you know? And once I get off, I'm like, whoa, yes, let me get up there again. You know what I mean? Uh, it's. Yeah. I think, I think you know, I'll always be really nervous and always have butterflies, no matter what I do. Even, like, tonight, I'm in Tampa. I've never been to Florida. I think that's always a blessing as well, traveling for work. Because, like, I have never really been that many places as a kid, you know? Like, we didn't travel that much as a family. Like, I just went back to Shanghai occasionally, you know, because that's where I was born. And But being able to go to New Orleans, being able to go to New York, being able to go to, you know, Tampa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tampa, you know, the number one uh, vacation destination. Uh, <laughs> I am sure Tampa's going nuts at just being in that list right now. Like, oh, yeah, New York, New Orleans, Tampa. <laughs> right. No, it's wild. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, but it's just cool, you know. Yeah, but, like, tonight I'm going to, you know, open up for Ars Arsenio Hall. Like, that's a huge deal, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm totally yeah. nervous right now. Like, right now I'm really nervous. I'll be honest. You know, like, it's just we're doing four shows. What if they hate all my material night one and then I have to, like, you know what I mean? Uh, it's oh, but that would be a great story for later. Right, exactly. I'm just going to have to riff and just, like, you know, do some crowd work for 20 minutes. But it, it'll be fine. You know, I trust that it'll be fine. But I will always have butterflies for sure, which is, you know, it's a good sign that you, you still love it. Well, thanks so much for taking out the time to chat with me today. I really I, – I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what all Alice gets to do over the season and uh, and really can't wait to see what you get to do next. Oh, cool. Oh, my God. That's it. Oh, my God. I was I was I was just getting started. Left. I was just oh, no, ask. we'll have to we'll have to do another one. Yeah, I, I, I sure. have a I have a whole another list of questions, but I take another 30 minutes out of your day. <laughs> I'm definitely down to do a part two. Uh, but thank you so much for having me. Thank you for watching The Trouble. Um, I'm really excited about the impact it's going to make on some people. Real, real quick, I, I, I want everybody to go out and watch the uh, attention uh, thing that uh, you and your uh, co-star Zuri just did. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting. I'd read Dataclysm, the OK Cupid study book from a few years ago, and and I was just watching it, going, "This, this is a thing." Uh, so yeah, I, I thought that was super cool. Everybody should go check you out on Twitter and and find that. Yes, yeah, Sherry Cola on every platform uh, on social media, and yeah, you know what? I think that is the beautiful thing about Good Trouble is that we are highlighting, 
you know, social issues and things that people aren't talking about, you know, and should be talking about. So it's exciting to be a part of the show that I'm proud of and that people seem to really, you know, dig. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Electric Sweater Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com and electricsweater.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening.